So beautiful. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday worship here at the United Methodist Church at Berlin on Palm Sunday. Welcome to those worshiping with us in the pews this morning, and welcome to those worshiping with us virtually. We are so glad you are here. If we can help make your worship experience more engaging in any way, please feel free to reach out to us at umcberlin at gmail.org. For those joining us virtually, we can add you to our email list to receive the bulletin and link to the live service each week, or we could send you a hymnal if you like. Today, we walk through the joy of Jesus' triumphant yet humble entry into Jerusalem. And we consider the cross as we strip the altar in anticipation of entering Holy Week. I hope that your season of Lent has been reflective and has deepened and enriched your relationship with Christ, who loves you so very much. I love this spiral dance we do through Christ's life each year. Difficult though it might be at times, it is such a gift of the word. I would like to thank those of you who have contributed special Lenten offerings based on the calendars created by Diane Mosher. Your offerings are deeply appreciated. It isn't too late if you would still like to participate. I do have a few announcements to make. Quite a few. <laughs> um, Center Brunswick has a Manhattan clam chowder soup sale going on Good Friday, March 29th. Pickup is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 990 Hoosick Road in Troy. It's a pre-order sale only, and quarts of chowder are available for $12 each, payable at pickup. Call to order, 518-528-6725, and you can see me for more information if you would like to participate in that and didn't catch the phone number. And then today, the community choir Easter Cantata is at 2 p.m. at the Petersburg Baptist Church. Um, March 31st, we will have our Easter sunrise service at 6.15 a.m., at 2529 Plank Road, and refreshments will follow here at the church. We will also have our 11 a.m. Easter service here on Easter. If you would like to purchase Easter lilies, you can do so for $8 through today. Please see Diane to do so. April 4th, our finance team will meet via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. April 6th, our food closet will be open from 9 until 11 a.m. They will also be open April 20th. On April 21st, we plan to do a group photo of our church family. There are also additional announcements in our bulletin. Please make sure that you see them. Are there any additional announcements for today? Hi, Mozart. <laughs> All right. So no additional announcements today? Let's pause together, bring ourselves into this space to worship. Hear these centering words with me. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride with passion and compassion. Ride in triumph and in joy. Ride in humility and gentleness. Ride with us as we travel the journey with you. Please join me for our quiet hymn in just a moment. It's number 2071, Jesus' Name Above All Names. You can find this in the Faith We Sing hymnal.
please join me for our call to worship this morning. The unison parts are printed in bold in your bulletin. In joy, we gather this day. In remembrance, we gather this day. In festive celebration and in quiet reflection, we gather to worship and pray. Please join me in an attitude of prayer before our Creator as we pray together in one voice our opening prayer. Jesus, you have walked this road with us many times. Guide our steps and keep us close. Inspire our worship with your loving presence and work in our lives, that your spirit may flow through our lives as we seek to help others walk the journey with you. Amen. Now our choir will bless us with Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are so blessed to have a choir here. Our scripture lesson today will be read by Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The first reading today is from Psalm. 118 verses 1 through 2 and verses 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, and the righteous shall enter into it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and we bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us a light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. The Gospel reading today is from Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Those of you who are able, please stand. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street, and as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. And then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. remain standing as you are able for our next hymn. It's number 278, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. It's in the United Methodist Hymnal. be seated. It is time for our children's moment. For the children in the sanctuary, you may come up to the front of the altar with Diane, or you may stay in your seat with your family, whatever is most comfortable for you, as we share a message just for you. The children joining us virtually and those who are young at heart. Would you like to come up to the altar? Okay. Do you need any help, Diane? No, I think I'm all set. Okay. Okay. Do you need a chair? Nope, we're going to just stand here for just for a minute. Just imagine how excited it had to be for all the kids when Jesus came riding in on that donkey, on that little colt. And so they didn't have balloons and that kind of stuff. Like we have a crazy little flight, but they had all these palm branches. And so they were waving the palm branches like crazy because they were celebrating that Jesus was coming into their town. So that's what, when we celebrate with our palm branches, 
That's why I had you waving. Hold on a second. Waving the branches. But I want to show you one of the things that you can do with one of these branches is because we'll give it people an idea of like, what do I do with the branch when I get home? Well, if you take the branch, and of course I'm trying to do this right up here, so I may not be able to do it, but one of the things that you can do with your palm branch is to make a cross out of it to help you to remember that Jesus died on the cross for us. And basically, it's just folding this around until it makes a cross, and then taking the little ends that you've got left and wrapping them around it till it makes a cross. Aha. And it just might come out, thank you guys. <laughs> it just might come out right. And then when you're all done, you just tuck the ends underneath. That might be the more challenging part. And oh man, so we want to thank Kayla and Cassie for the crosses they brought to Kay. Those are beautiful girls. So beautiful. There, so then you can make a cross out of your palm. And you can keep that and say, I remember that so on Sunday. So we're going to share palms with everyone today. So I'm going to give each one of you a bunch of palms. And what you can do is you can be generous because we have lots. And you can go back into the congregation. You can give everyone, I can hold this. Give everyone some palms, okay? Oh, thank you. Can you give palms out? Go ahead and give some palms out. Thank you so much, Diane, for your beautiful message. We are so grateful for the gift of children here today. It is now time to make our offerings and tithes. <laughs> we give thanks to God, who is faithful and good. And we give thanks by sharing our offerings and tithes today.
join me in a spirit of prayer. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for your steadfast faithfulness, your humble leadership in our world. Bless these gifts we return to you now, that they may guide others to follow you and walk humbly in your ways. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as these scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you want us to hear today. Christ comes to us today full of equal parts triumph and humility. Even as we celebrate Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the humility of Christ pervades every element of this story. When the path of joy turns to the Via Dolorosa, the path of suffering, humility is revealed to be the course of wisdom. It can be the wisest and most difficult lesson and guide we might come to know in our own journeys, humility. Today we focus our attention on the beginning of this journey, the entry into Jerusalem. But we also know that the cross is coming, as did Christ. With a spirit of gentleness and humility, Jesus entered into Jerusalem riding a colt. He rode a colt despite the massive cheering crowd growing around him, a crowd which celebrated and honored him and his presence among them. But he entered in a spirit of humility on a colt. The same spirit of humility filled Christ as he gathered his disciples, teaching them the spirit of servanthood and the way of compassion. And he calmly faced his accusers and his death also with humility. But even today, as our attention is on his entry, humility and triumph are here with him and with us. They foreshadow the story of death and resurrection to come. Today, our gospel reading from Mark slows time down for us so that we can pay more attention than usual to the details. These days are the peak of the saving actions of Christ in this world and for this world. We can step into these rhythms with Christ as we walk this journey together. We can step back in time to the entry into Jerusalem, riding on a colt, not a stallion. A stallion would be emblematic of a king ready for war. This is what might be expected of an anointed Messiah. But no, Christ comes on the symbol of humility and peace, the humble donkey colt, declaring a prince of peace to come. And this statement of peace, peaceful being, is only enhanced by his choice of this unridden colt, gentled by Jesus riding him. Next, I want to focus a bit on the crowds of people waiting to welcome Christ. Who are they? Who spread their cloaks over the colt for Christ to ride upon? who spread their cloaks on the ground, who went out to the fields to cut these leafy palms and lay them in the road for the colt and Christ to walk upon. Who was so excited to shout their excitement with cries of Hosanna? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. It was a mix of Christ's followers and the people of Jerusalem. They were crying Hosanna, which is a cry to save us. Save us now, even though today it is often a cry of praise. Historically, it would have meant they were crying out to be saved, shouting for saving to a new king rising to power. But now they shout Hosanna, save us, save us now to one who has the true authority and power to save. What love is this? Jesus riding into Jerusalem to hear cries for salvation and going on to provide that salvation to all who would accept his gift of suffering and resurrection. Throughout most of the book of Mark, we find Jesus telling his followers not to tell who he is, to keep his identity a secret. But now it is time for the big reveal. The words spoken by his followers as he enters come from an enthronement psalm, which we read today, spoken when a new king comes to power. This declares Christ's power to those in authority, which is a dangerous move. This is a clear signal of the true authority of Christ in a place that has viewed Christ as an outsider till now. As we lift our palms and celebrate Palm Sunday, we too celebrate and declare our allegiance to Christ's true authority and power, Christ whom the world tried to destroy. Perhaps we are foolish for remembering this parade into Jerusalem as we move towards Christ's death on the cross. 
to speak truth to power, to speak for the marginalized and the oppressed, the voiceless and the powerless, is always a risk. It's a risk to the status quo. It's a risk to the one who does it. The world resists change, often in strong and powerful ways. But our God, too, is a powerful and creative God, a creative force at work in this world in ways too numerous to count. And we embrace this life force, this steadfast love, this powerful God working for good. I would like to turn our attention to our reading from Psalm 118. The psalm ties our theme of Palm Sunday and our gospel reading so neatly. The gates of righteousness, righteousness, we read in verse 19, are significant. Jesus enters these very gates that our psalmist seeks. And in verse 21, we can give thanks that Jesus has become our salvation. Jesus is the very stone that the builders refused, now the head cornerstone. Even the festal branches laid in this psalm are the words that will announce the arrival of Christ in Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. These gates of righteousness and the gates of Jerusalem were open to Christ. How are these gates faring in our own lives? Are there gates in your lives where you have shut out the righteousness of Christ who comes in love, offering new mercies each day? What figurative gates could we fling wide, opening ourselves to the mercy and grace that Christ offers to us, waiting for us to simply accept it into our hearts and lives? Where could we accept more deeply, drink more freely of the living waters of our Christ? This mercy and grace produces fruits of the spirit and acts of mercy and works of social justice, good works for people around us. We are able to love because God loves us. When we touch that love inside us, we are moved to love the people around us and it comes so easily. We are able to love others because we know love. God's love is revealed to us through the life, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. We can see this love in the ministry of Christ, his ministry with the outsiders, the tax collectors, the sinners, his work healing the sick and feeding the hungry. We too can be inspired to action by God's love for us, which we receive as a gift, undeserved, unmerited. We don't have to do anything to deserve this love. And we don't just feed the hungry either when we are moved to action. We ask, why are they hungry in the first place? We move up the river of causality to try and prevent them from becoming hungry in the first place. We are not just charged with responding to the needs of the vulnerable, we are charged with caring for the vulnerable, alleviating their suffering, asking the hard questions of why. John Wesley held the belief that we meet Christ when we step outside ourselves and serve others when we stand face to face with their needs. This is one way the heart is opened to God's grace and love. When we serve in this way, new habits of holiness are developed within us according to Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To live in this way is truly to journey as Jesus did. It is to walk with Christ. When you live a life of servanthood to those that Christ loved, people will meet a piece of Jesus in you. They will come to know Christ through you when you serve and love them as Christ does. Through these actions of justice and compassion, the love and grace of Christ are made tangible in your heart, in your life, and in your world. They ripple outward into your world with unknown consequences, allowing our creative and wonderful God to act in our world in unique and powerful ways. We are called to live as Jesus did and follow in his footsteps, loving who he loved. Today, we celebrate moments of joy, but Christ knew the suffering to follow. Christ suffered because he used his power and authority for the powerless and the marginalized, the weak, we too are called to suffer with Christ for those who are weak in our own societies. We are called to follow Christ in this way to the cross. The question this week is, will we follow? Will we follow in every way? Will we risk being alone to do what is right, to stand on who we know Christ to be? Will we risk the cross to love our neighbors? Jesus is calling us 
waiting for us, triumphant and humble. Humility is one of the doors through which we access a deeper and more authentic faith. If our triumph and our faith in Christ is to be true, it must also be deeply humble, for we follow Christ who was deeply humble. Today, let us remember the work to which we are called with a humble and triumphant heart as we turn our attention to the cross and the resurrection to come in the next week. May this week be a quiet time of reflection on the nature of your relationship with Christ and who Christ is calling you to be in the world today. Who is Christ calling you to do good works for? Who is Christ calling you to serve and how? Can you move upstream and ask questions of why to prevent the causes of suffering in the world around us? Jesus is calling for you to follow him. Are you listening? Let us be together in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, humble us as we come to you in prayer today. Uncover the masks that obscure our vision and keep us from facing our true selves. Hold us close that we might find the courage to lean on your grace and rest in your love and forgiveness. Bless us with humility, love, and mercy, that we might be merciful, humble, and loving to everyone we meet, even ourselves. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our next hymn. It's number 657. This is the day. We're going to sing it two times through. That's number 657. This is the day that the Lord has made. be seated. That song never fails to lift my heart. It is time for our cares and concerns. What joys would we like to celebrate with the congregation today? It was beautiful, the sunshine through the ice. Absolutely spectacularly beautiful. those who have power at home, we celebrate that. <laughs> Children in the sanctuary, such a joy. Mozart in the sanctuary. Mozart in the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> play was wonderful, and Olivia and my friend Cindy and I went to New Hampshire Friday, came back yesterday in the storm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tyla's play went really well? Yes. Excellent. And safe travels through the storm. We are so glad to hear that. The worst part was Lebanon to Berlin. Yeah. That's And I am joyful that I was able to make it here this morning because my plow guy did not arrive and I just had to kind of push my way through the snow this morning. It was like somewhere between 12 and 18 inches of it, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other joys? It was a beautiful ride here. It was stunningly beautiful riding in today. Yeah. Any 
other joys today? Okay, let's move on to some prayer concerns. What prayer concerns do we have today? Um, Joanne asked me to add her friend Lucas to our prayer concerns list. So we will pray for Lucas today. Yes. We will pray for you and your family and your mom, yeah, you know, as okay. As you navigate this very difficult situation, our prayers are with you. Other prayer concerns? So for our prayers of the people today, we're going to do a little, little bit different. It's from Reverend Stephen Fearing, and it's responsive. So each time I say, um, answer us, Lord, you will say, become our salvation. So I will say, answer us, Lord, and your response will be, become our salvation. So I want to practice one time. All right. Answer us, Lord. Become our salvation. Okay. All right. Let us pray. We pray to you, good and gracious God, by lifting up to you our heartfelt prayers. Answer us, Lord. Throughout time and trial, you have led us through the wilderness on paths long and toilsome. Together we follow you to the dark hour when you will be betrayed and broken. As our faces are turned to the cross, Strengthen our weary souls that we might continue with faithful footsteps and follow the course that you have set. Answer us, Lord. Our On this day, you begin marching toward your death, a death to which we have been sealed in our baptisms. Together, we are preparing to take the plunge into the darkness of that cold and lonely tomb. What will we find there? Is there truth to be found in the darkness of this week? Answer us, Lord. We gather to begin Holy Week, a week, though dark and dismal, that is nevertheless a preparation for resurrection, a resurrection to which we have been sealed in our baptisms. Together, we are preparing to be renewed by the light of the empty tomb. What will we find there? What truths will be discovered in the light of Easter morning? Answer us, Lord. As we march together to Jerusalem through Gethsemane and to the hill of the cross, we bring with us the concerns that are on our hearts this day. Be with those who cannot feel the hope of the resurrection. Answer us, Lord. Be with those who have lost loved ones, those who will struggle to sing Alleluia later this week. Answer us, Lord. Be with those who seek affordable housing and affordable health care in difficult times. Answer us, Lord. Be with those without a voice 
that their voices may be freed to proclaim your praise. Answer us, Lord. Be with those who are approaching their own death, that they may be comforted by the truth of the resurrection. Answer us, Lord. Be with every one of us as we seek to prepare for your resurrection by following you to your death. Answer us, Lord. Help us to rest in the comforting truth that in life and in death we belong to you. Give us strength. Give us courage. Give us hope for that which you promise us, everlasting life. Answer us, Lord. And now we pray together as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our final hymn. It's number 288, Were You There? It's in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please remain standing for the benediction. And after the benediction, um, during the postlude, Once Upon a Tree, um, Nancy and I will strip the altar and drape it in black in anticipation of Holy Week when the choir sings Once Upon a Tree.
into God's world humble and kind. Go into God's world courageous, faithful, and true. Go into God's world gracious and loving. Go into God's world carrying the peace of Christ. May you go in peace this week. Amen.